In this session, we will study about private equity and venture capital as an alternative investment. So first of all, let's understand what are the various categories of private equity investments. First one is leverage buyouts. Leverage buyouts are those kind of acquisitions where the entire acquisition price is largely funded by leverage that is debt. And these kind of funds look to earn huge returns over the investment horizon which could range from 5 to 10 years on an average. We will see more details about leverage buyouts in our next slide. The second one is venture capital. Uh, this is more about uh, funding a business which is in its early stage or it is seed stage or it is growth stage. We will also see more details about that. Third one is development capital which is provided to companies which are in a growth phase and lastly distressed investing where you are investing in a company which is in trouble and once it gets revived you wish to make returns out of those revival. We will see all of them in detail. Uh, the basic point of private equity investment is that they invest in companies which are private or they invest in publicly traded companies and then take them private and so unlike equity mutual funds or hedge funds private equity investments do involve a contribution in the management of the company so let's look at leverage buyout funds the lbo funds acquire publicly traded or listed companies and then take them private or two, they invest in established private companies. As we discussed, a large part or a significant percentage of the purchase price or the acquisition price is financed through debt or leverage. And hence, the name leveraged buyouts. In most of the cases, this funding of debt is raised by a combination of bank loans, that is the normal term loans from banks, which are secured or collateralized against the assets. The second source of funding is subordinated debt and then high yield bonds or mezzanine financing. Now each of these category of debts has a different level of security against the assets of the target company. The point here is the leverage or the debt funding raised for the acquisition finance is collateralized by the assets of the target company. So the bank loans or the are the secured loans. They have the first charge on the assets of the target and then the second charge is of the subordinated debt which is second in line. It is little lower rated than the secured bank loans and then comes the high yield bonds where they are unsecured and hence they demand a very attractive rate of interest in order for investors to put in the money or fund it as a debt finance or mezzanine financing and this is the last source of financing here in case high yield bonds and other debt is not possible then the LBO funds will seek to get mezzanine financing which is slightly different than the traditional debt in the form that there is an incentive in the form of an equity return or an upside sharing in the form of warrants or convertible options given to these mezzanine finance investors. So they will have a fixed return for a for some period and once the company turns around they'll have an option to have a small stake in the company in the form of equity warrants conversion or bond conversion. As we discussed the target company's assets here serve as the collateral for the debt borrowed for the acquisition and also the debt servicing that is the repayment of the principal and the interest is met by the companies or the target companies future expected cash flows or EBITDA. So it is critical that this target company is uh, either improving its operation substantially or is having a stable operation right now and we increase the operating cash flow as a result to pay down the 
debt over the future period. The other types of or the various types of LBOs that are there are one management buyouts. This in this kind of a buyout, the current management team is involved in the acquisition, meaning the existing management will continue to manage the business even after the buyout has happened of the existing shareholders. And another one is management buy-ins where the current management team of the target company is replaced by the LBO fund managers where they will hands-on manage the target company or they will appoint a new team for the management of this company. So these are the two types of LBOs. Moving to venture capital funds. So the venture capital funds are often characterized or known by the stage at which they invest in the investees. So let's understand these various stages. The first one, angel investing or idea stage investing. This, this type of investment is made just at the time where the idea is heard or idea is presented to the VC funds and they are impressed by the idea and want to bet their money on the idea. So that is called angel investing. Now remember this is at this stage of investing there is no proof of concept of the product or etc that is developed to prove that this could be a successful business model. It is just an idea. Then comes the next stage that is the seed stage funding. Here the funding is made to develop the product prototype and put it in the market for testing. So this is the next stage of funding after angel investing that is called seed stage funding. The third stage is the early stage investing where the money put in by the VC funds is used for initiating the operations or putting up the plant getting the things in place for the commercial production but this funding is invested by the VC funds in the company prior to any commercial production or sales. So the 1, 2 and 3 are called the early stage or formative stage funding by VC funds. The next one that is fourth one is later stage funding. Now in this case the funds invested by the VC firms are put in use for a major expansion or initial expansion like a new plant or a new product category or a new geography or an existing product improvement or a huge ad or marketing campaign etc being taken up by the company to create awareness. But surely this funding is done before the company goes public or it does an IPO that is initial public offering to become publicly listed. And the fifth one is mezzanine financing. Now this is the kind of a bridge gap funding where the company is in a stage where it has done a major expansion and it is looking to do or raise more funds via an IPO. So but between these two stages it needs some capital to beef up its production or strengthen its business or balance sheet etc. So this is the mezzanine type of funding that is provided by VC funds for preparing a firm to go public or to do an IPO. Some of the characteristics of VC funds are the investments made by VC funds in companies are highly illiquid investments meaning they are largely private companies. There could not be readily a buyer available in case the VC fund wants to liquidate its investment. So they are highly illiquid. Further there is a limitation on the data availability also. Since these companies are private, not much public information is available regarding the companies. And they are difficult to value. In case the companies are in a unique kind of a business, it may be difficult to find comparable listed companies where you, which you can compare and try and derive a valuation based on that comparison. So these investee companies could be difficult to value. Here the entrepreneurs may not be necessarily good managers. The entrepreneurs may be having a sound business idea and maybe having some initial enough amount of funds 
but they could not be necessarily good managers in the sense that developing a management team for growing a business to a certain level so this is a challenge which is faced by vc funds for some companies which are in early stage further the vc fund managers need proper incentives since there is an element of hands on in involvement in the management of the business of the target companies or the investee companies they will need proper incentive funds also and in this case the timing of the exit strategy of the vc fund is extremely crucial for generating the returns for the fund investors these exit strategies can result in a huge return or can result in a loss value or a very minimal return also so the timing has to be absolutely spot on for the vc funds to make handsome returns and as we've been discussing many times it requires hands on operations of the management of the portfolio companies and vc funds will appoint the necessary designate board of director representation for overlooking the management and significant policy decisions of the target or investee companies let's look at an example of vc valuation so say for example uh, we are evaluating a company to be invested in which requires an initial investment of around 2 million dollars the vc fund has set the return the required return at 25% and it estimates that after 3 years the investment can be exited at 10 million dollars so the estimated payoff after 3 years is 10 million dollars now let's work with some of the conditional failure rates it is quite possible that if you are investing in a seed stage or early stage kind of a scenario where the commercial production is not yet begun the vc fund could be taking a risk of the business not surviving beyond certain number of years it's quite possible that the commercial production is not viable or after that we find that the product price point at which we did the study is not the right one to be sell in sold in the market so there could be many reasons where the business may not survive so there are conditional failure rates here so this the rates failure rates are for year 1 it is 10% meaning there's a 10% chance that the business may fail after year 1 and so on so for year 2 it's 14% and for year 3 it's 11% so the chances of the business surviving for 3 years is the multiplication of the survival rate for all the 3 years so the probability that the venture will survive for 3 year is 1 minus 10% into 1 minus 14% into 1 minus 11% so that gives us the figure or the probability for this business surviving until 3 years is 68.89% so our estimated payoff at the end of year 3 is 10 million dollars we multiply this 10 million dollars into 0.6889 that is probability for the survival for 3 years and divided by 1.25 raised to 3 that is our annual required return over the 3 year period so this will give us the net present value of the business and then we reduce the 2 million dollars of initial investment to calculate the net present value and we get the value of one roughly 1.5 million dollars so as we see that there is a positive npv and at a required return of 25% we are getting a 1.5 million dollars as an npv so it could be a good investment